Hi, in today's video, we're going to look at how easy it is to send SES email with Python. We're going to write this in a Lambda function. This probably only takes us a few minutes, but this is usually something very powerful if you want to send custom emails. So let's just dive in. So we're going to start by creating a Lambda function. So let me just for Lambda. And we're going to create a new function. I'm going to call this function SES email and I'm going to change it from Node.js to Python and I'll just go with Python 3.8. For the permission, we're going to leave the custom role. So this will create a role with the basic permissions and then we'll add a few more permission that we'll need. And let's go ahead and create function. And that should take probably just a minute, so give it some time. Now that we have our email, right, we actually, now that we have our Lambda function, we can just go ahead and test, and it should just give us a JSON return of this message. So let's go ahead and create a test, and I'm going to call this just test. And pretty much when you test a function, you just want to send something to, as the event. And this is a JSON data, so let's go ahead and hit save. And if we test this, we should see the message return. Now this is all in the event. So if we go ahead and let's take this out and just say event. And we're going to print the test case, right? So let's go back to test. If I open up the test that we just create and let's call this test one, test three. So we're going to and save this. And once we deploy those changes, right, we just made a change. So we're going to deploy your Lambda function to run the latest. And if we test, we should be able to print those values we're sending in as event. And here we are. So we have key one, test two, test three. So that's how easy it is to print data that you're sending as a request um, to your Lambda function. So we're going to make a few more changes. Uh, we want to first add the permission for SES email. So let's go to configuration and permission. And this is the role that got created. Now, if you have a, if you had selected a custom role, you may want to find that role as well, but I'm going to go with this. So let's just open up the role. And if we scroll down to the permission, you'll see the custom permission. And this, as it is, it gives us the ability to write, to create a log stream and put log event. And that's just pretty much every time you call a Lambda function, it's logging those requests. And that's good for troubleshooting. But we want to add our own permission to allow the Lambda function to send email. So we're going to go over to the right and add permission. And we're going to create an inline policy. This is usually a JSON. We can actually type this in, this in, but I'll show you an easy way if you're just working with the services and may not know what to choose. So go to service, and we're going to look for SES. I'm going to go with SES. V2, I'll look that up, what's the main difference, but that should work. And we want the permission from, I think, right. So we want to be able to send email and send raw email. I think those are the two we need. And for the resource, for now, we're going to say all resource. And let's go ahead and review this. And let's just call this permission. And let's it create policy. And now we should have a new policy with the permissions to send email, right? So now that we have the permission set up, we can actually go ahead and write our code. But there is one thing, right? Uh, in order to send email, there's a few configuration that we need to do. So if we go to SES, and that's Amazon Simple Email. It may look confusing at first, but what we want to pay attention to is verified identities. And this is where if you have your own domain and you want to send your email from your own domain, you can go through the process here to register your DNS records and all those settings. In our case, to, since this is very, we're keeping this very simple, we would just want to be able to send from a specific email. So I'm going to create an identity. 
and this will be an email of course if you want to go through the process of setting up a domain it's fairly simple once you have access to that domain and you can confirm ownership but so you want to enter a valid email here that you have access to i'm just going to use my personal email and we're going to leave the configuration set blank so configuration set allows you to track email activity if you want to look and if you have bounce email, rejects, and stuff like that, maybe in another video I can look at that. For now, we're just going to put a email we want to be able to send email from. And let's create this identity. And it should have sent us a email allow, asking us to confirm ownership, right? So here we see verification pending. So if I go over to my Gmail, I should see an email right here. So let's open this up. And I'm just going to hit that link and congratulations your email has been verified so if i close this and go back to ses if i should refresh this i should now see email identity verified which is pretty good so that means now we can actually send email from this address right so if you want to add multiple address you want to follow the process or if you want to go through and set up your domain so let's go ahead and go back to lambda i guess i closed it let me search for my Lambda function. Of course, it's always good to work with your Lambda functions locally. And since this is an easy example, next I'll start, <laughs> I'll show you how to download the, the Lambda code and use something like serverless or CloudFormation or even Terraform to, to write that infrastructure as a code. So let's take a few things out and we're gonna start from scratch. So first things first, right, we want to import the Boda library. And that's a library that gives us access to AWS resources. And we're going to create a client. And let's go into Boda tree, client. And the client we want to have access to is SES and our region. US East that one now how do I know my region if, if I go up to the upper right and click down I'm currently running from US Virginia East one so you want to put your appropriate region there so now we have a client that's pointing to SES so we can access some of those properties so let's go ahead and set up a email response and this will be your SES client and we're going to send email. And now we can go ahead and start typing in the specific destination and the message. So first we want to put in the destination. Hopefully I'm spelling that right. Right destination. And that will be the email address we want to send to. And that will be a to address. And of course, this will be pretty identical. This could be a list of addresses. So we want to put that in as an array. And let me send it to my test email address that's already verified. And if you have multiple address, of course, you can continue that comma and add those lists. I'm just going to use one for now. And the next thing we need is the actual message. So let's go ahead and type that in. We need a message body. And let's send the data. And this is, is my first yes, email. And once we have that, the next thing, think of all the things you need for email, right? We have the destination, the message body, and we need a subject. this in quotes this should be in the identical indentation so let's again data and email from my SES account that's our subject 
and this should be enough let's go ahead and deploy this and give it a try right we have our destination we have our message we have our message body and subject and I think we may need a source but I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this and so we can start looking at those arrows if we have any so let's test and as I expected right so we're missing some value let's see if we can actually find that email response let's go back and let's add our source and that will be the address we're sending from And of course, we could have put this email in a, in a variable. So we'll clean this up a bit. And I think I missed a few things. So first of all, this should be to, to address. And for the body, we want a text before we send our data. So right in the first line there let's do a text and our text should be the parent to data so let's go ahead and deploy this and let's test it again to addresses since we're sending to multiple address and let's test and there we go so let's check our email we should we didn't get an error this time so we should be seeing our email so let's go to inbox and there we are we did get our email this is from SES so that's how easy it is to send email now one thing is we are just using plain text to send this email let's go ahead and clean this up a bit so i'm just going to say email address equal and so we can pass this variable in to avoid any any error so that's one step. Well, another thing we can do is actually structure this email as a HTML. And that's probably a lot more flexible because then you can actually customize different UX elements for the email address you're sending. And that's pretty simple. So let's do that in our next video.